Hello and welcome back to the Western Front of the Great Patriotic War. So we're going to crack right into this one because the goal here is to finish going down the line and then turn the turn. Um, so we're going to start up at Vileki Luki just to make sure that we're all set here. Um, uh, we're not really going to change anything. Um, because we just don't want to, <laughs> and we're just going to hope that that's okay. Uh, we do have a decent, decent enough setup here. We're, we're not really all that vulnerable to attack through this line now because of the extra units we've brought in and farther down here, we've got a lot of units stacked up that are maybe not great but at least they're prepared for combat we'll put it that way they have some combat prep points which is very important and as you look down our line we in general have a, a pretty deep line in some places um now some of these rifle divisions here are are pretty vulnerable and i'm a little concerned about that um, but to counteract that, I'm just setting some of these uh, units on reserve. God, it's so annoying that he's so close to being ready. I don't understand why he's not. Um, but it's life in the big city sometimes. Hmm, he's going to that unit. I wonder if we want to reassign him to someone else, like the 44th Rifles. Yeah, let's give you to the 44th Rifles. You're not going to go north. You're going to stay in the middle. I wonder if that's why he didn't get enough troops last time. Now, you, you can see here that the, the river line is, is kind of our best bet in terms of defense. I really want this guy to be ready next time. This is pretty well stacked, but with a lot of weak units, this is essentially just one division if they were full strength, but they're in really good terrain. This friggin' guy, I'm a little nervous about him, I'm not going to lie. He could get knocked back with just a single touch. Oh, okay. So he counts as ready now. Hmm. But he's also a lot of the strength of the stack. Hmm. I kind of think I got to leave him there. Alright, you can be moved to north a little ways. There's no problem with that. He can honestly just stay right there. Does he have another unit? No, no, he's just going back to the western front. Okay. I'm an idiot. Who's this guy go to? Hmm. This guy must be pretty healthy at this point, yeah. So maybe we can move him down to here. Makes me feel a little bit better anyways. Move the headquarters a little bit. Just for convenience. You 
In general, I think the setup is is okay. It's it's when we come south of this that we start having problems. So what we want to start doing here is pulling back to this river line if we can, just so we don't get encircled. If if this whole thing breaks out really hard and rushes north, we don't want anything to get encircled. I mean, these guys are probably okay up here to hold the line for a little while, because I would like to hold that that river line a little bit. Um, but these guys, we can start marching them back, to be honest. Because uh, they're not going to be doing us much good here. Yeah. Alright. He's literally got no one under him, so... Um, we'll probably need commanders in this area here, I imagine, but... We'll do the commanders last. We'll do the headquarters last. We'll just start marching people back as far as they'll go and see what kind of line we can get. These guys will be together. Together forever. That's as far as they can go. We're just going to give up ground here. It's better to give ground than to give up men at this point. We're also going to need a depot. Um, maybe we'll start turning Kiev into a four. Not sure. We'll do that last. I think it may be... I mean, Trinikov is so close to this other depot that we already have a Gomel. And then Kiev is right there. Like the ideal spot would be here, but there's no rail. Chernigov is at a good interse rail intersection, but it doesn't really help us all that much. Uh, no. This guy already moved. Do these guys all go back to the Western Front? Fourth motorized. Okay, so he's got him. Thirty first rifle corps. Has a bunch of these guys. That's so annoying. Alright, that's gotta be his spot. I'm thinking we might want to turn this into a depot here. What's the deal with this town? Small population. But I think it's I think it's gonna be worth it there. Not that it'll get a ton of supply. I mean Maybe we should just be planning to move everything back, essentially. We know that you're going to be pulling back because you're out of gas. And we're going to need to throw bodies down at south of Kiev. So I don't mind sticking these guys back here. I mean, he's literally out of units. I don't even know. Okay, how far can we get these guys? Oh, they already moved. Okay.
So now the key is moving everyone far enough back that they're not in immediate danger. Love to give him a real unit, but we don't have a lot of real units now, do we? It's already triple stacked. So we'll stick him there. Now what I'm doing is I'm looking for a defensible hex. Because I'm we're kind of shifting the line south overall. This is going to be a 4 now, and this is going to be a 3. So what is Kiev at? Kiev is currently a 1, so we want that to be a 3. We want this to be a 4. Now we kind of know where we're going to be sitting. This guy's got no one under him, so he's kind of useless for now. Honestly, can I? I would love to. I mean, he might just get deleted. I don't know. I don't really care where he goes. I found the swamp. And this area here, this is this is where all the big fighting um, happens on the northern front of the 2022 Ukraine war. Except nowadays, there's a big highway that runs from Belarus down into Chernobyl, which obviously this. Pripyat area used to be highly populated before Chernobyl and then right down in Kiev and that's where you saw all those big traffic jams of the Russian army that uh, we're doing the same thing except we're in retreat I guess they eventually were too but Do, do, do. I mean, these guys, 10th Army has nobody under him? Who's under the 10th Army? I guess nobody. He has nobody. These were all things that got escaped from the pocket. So they're pretty useless to us. We'll just stick them here. Stick them all back as far back as they'll go. Oh, I didn't mean to move the 10th army. Can I undo that? Yes. That, that's like the one time of type of move you can undo. So 
think I want to put him behind Kiev. And what we're going to do with him is kind of assign stuff that doesn't have a, an army, nearby army, to him. Actually, we'll stick you here purely for your air defense. The Cavalry Corps with a single Cavalry weak division. Delete this depot. Okay, now these guys need to start pulling back because they're about to get bloody surrounded by this Panzer army. So we want to just pull them all the way back to Kiev. So that's what we'll start doing here. We'll try to build <clears throat> a bit of a defense along this river line here. I don't remember what's in here. Do I have any sacrificial lambs that I could use? Security divisions, where are you? Security. Yeah, you can't really scout too much. It's not even worth it. I'm just really scared to leave anything here because I feel like it might get surrounded. But a lot of these are motorized or mechanized, and you know, maybe they can do some good. So, maybe what we need to do is to just move some units around to try to, you know, hold the line. We'll just make them clear us out, you know. None of these are going to do any good. I have a mind to just, we'll, we'll just pull them all back. We'll get them all to the 24th motorized and, and get them all out of there. I don't want them distracting me. So the dangerous thing is this guy is on this side of the river here. Which we do not want. But we sure as hell don't want to fight him necessarily I just I don't think we could ever push him back
we're just going to use these guys as kind of holding divisions while the rest of our army retreats. Unready, unready, ready. See, these are the ones that are really hard to decide what to do with. Because I would really love to be able to preserve these for later operations. But at the same time, I, I understand that we don't want to let the Germans completely run wild here. But I would much rather sacrifice a infantry division than a bunch of motorized uh, mechanized and tank so that's why they're they're getting pulled off the line and we're going to pull back to this river so this will be our furthest south point And, I mean, those are really weak, but Can I give him to the 36 rifles? I can. So now the 36 rifle corps theoretically they do have a bit of artillery. Give him a bit more. We'll just pull these guys all back. Back across the river. can use you as a reserve because you're relatively strong. Okay, so we want, want these two to move back with you. We want the tank division to move farther back. And we've got another situation, uh, pretty much the same deal right here. So it's going to be a pain to deal with. We're going to reassign him to someone down here, 24th motorized probably. Because they're getting pulled back anyways. Yep, you're going to get pulled back. Fourth motorized is getting pulled way back, probably to here.
I think historically, I think historically they moved straight back. They moved essentially straight east. I don't think they moved in like the to the northeast like we're doing. Sorry, I'm not talking a lot. It's just a, a lot of clicking here more than anything. Well, we're making it. We're making progress. We're we're pulling back. He doesn't really have any commands in the area, so let's pull him further back. He's definitely not a priority for supply. These guys definitely are. Try to get them some reinforcements and stuff. Okay, so now we can fit the fifth army onto Zithamir. And we can fit this motorized core maybe here. That could kind of work. Man, I have a bad feeling about this pocket. <clears throat> Don't think there's much we can do to stop them from getting into this area, which is really scary. They could just completely break out from here. Because this is double rail all the way down. 
to Odessa. I guess it depends on what they decide to do next turn. Definitely want some more stuff back here. If we can find it. Put these both on reserve. Maybe they'll get committed to a battle. And at least this should slow them down. So we can just plop these guys back down here, I think. Is he still in supply? Yep. So they won't be able to they won't be able to walk between these because of the zone of control. Uh, uh actually, I don't know about that. He might not have a zone of control, unfortunately. So we'll stick these both on reserve. And maybe they'll get committed. If they got a good general. That's a very weak tile. But hopefully there's just enough stuff there that even if they get smacked, I, mean, I don't really care about losing rifle divisions or anti-tank brigades. So I would hope that they hit that instead of my tanks. So now the question is, what do I do with this bottom area? We, we really want to delay them. Just so we can break some more of this stuff out. There's no point in having him there. Anyone we can get out, we should get out. Admittedly, that's not that's not many people, but if we can get you out, we'll try. The question is, how far do I let them come down? I think here. Oh, that strategically, this is the best spot. And we're going to have to triple stack that. Thirty fifth, forty eighth and ninth army. They all are under different commanders. That's crazy. Who is under the forty eighth? Forty eighth has four. So you are going to be the reserve. Okay, so 35th, I have no clue where 35th is, but you're under 48th now. Same with you. The 48th Rifle Corps is going to need some stuff. Do 
and some artillery and pray. Okay, so now kind of move him over. This thing move here. Put it on refit. Unfortunately for these guys, there's no safe place to run, so they might get killed. Not the end of the world, though. I would love to have another unit there with a zone of control. I mean, these airborne brigades are not going to be able to face an infantry division. So let's just pull them, pull them up here. Because it doesn't really change the defense at all, right? So now at least they can't walk someone through. They have, they would have to at least kill our weak units. See if we can't get a little bit of supply in. He does not have much. Jesus, these guys are just going to get whipped. That's that's pretty good down there. By pretty good, I mean terrible, but <laughs> what can you do? All right, so now let's think about supply. Three, four, four, four. Probably going to want another one somewhere in there, probably here. Reserve is right there, but I, I would think we would, we would want another depot around here. Overall, I'm pretty happy with my setup. So, I think we're pretty much ready to turn the turn. We'll just spend the rest of our points on units. Separate tank regiment, that's new. What does that have? KV-1. Hmm. 
Very tempting. Huh. Very tempting. That would really be useful. Don't have enough for those. They gave us a lot of new toys this turn. We still need more of these. We still need a lot more anti-tank guns. So what is the difference between these? One has the 45 millimeter and one has an 85 millimeter. Why would I ever want the 45 millimeter? Oh, okay, so this is also a flak gun. <clears throat> so that's kind of like an 88 regiment. That kind of makes sense. I mean, we definitely need some more anti-tank. I feel like that stat's awful low. Uh, 160 against armor? I don't know about that. 120. 120. Let's compare that to the this gun. 121. Okay, so I guess it's the highest of the options, but damn. So this one comes with 12 152s. This one comes with 24. This one's just howitzers. So it's 24 field guns and this is exactly the same. Oh, the B4. That's a big boy. It's a very cool gun. The BR2. I, I love artillery. I, I'm a bit of a artillery guy. BR5. That's kind of useless to us. I mean, this gun seems very, very, very good. I don't know much about it historically, but uh, it seems like it's kind of doing everything for us. Whatever. I, I like having this mix. So like a good amount of M30s because they're cheap. Yeah. I, I like having those. Honestly, I'd rather have six of these than, than anything else. More artillery. Give me more. Speaking of artillery, let's give this guy some artillery. Oh man, I cannot wait to get some of this artillery onto the line. It's going to be glorious. All right, so whoever is here, can I move you up one step, two steps? Just like more stuff to be in command range. 
The more stuff that we can get in command range, the better. We'll give them some understrength artillery regiments. I'm not expecting much. Okay, so we get three. Three and him. Yeah, I think we're pretty good. Well, we're out of APs. We're pretty much out of movement points. We've moved everyone. And uh, the line is... Still kind of a disaster here. Don't know what's going to happen. My best bet is that a lot of people are going to get killed. But... Unfortunately, that's the way the war goes. Alright, so next time we will uh, click the turn and turn button. And we'll see what the fourth week of the war brings us. We'll officially be a month into the war at the end of next turn. And, yeah, uh, there's actually a way to see the historical, the historical dates that things were captured on in-game. Forget what the button is. Oh, city capture dates. Okay. Don't know what that did. Doesn't seem to do anything. Maybe it doesn't stack with logistics. Oh, okay. It it only shows it when you mouse over it. Okay, so capture dates July ninth, nineteen forty one. So we're if Zithamir does not get captured this turn then we're actually doing better. Let's see. So Viniesta. Capture date July 21, 1941. It's inter Okay. So they actually, historically, they, they put a lot more stock in defending Viniesta than we are. July 22nd. July 20. July 22nd. July 5th, July 11. So we're right on course with the, most of this pocket here. But we're, for some reason, we're doing better than historical up here. I don't feel like these are even threatens. Like I, I don't think we're going to lose this area this turn necessarily. I mean, I might be completely wrong, but because Kiev didn't didn't get taken till later, but that's just because they they spent time to encircle it. See, like just crossing the the Dnieper took them a long time. So August sixteenth, they made it to the Dnieper. September 19th, a, mo a month later, they made it to the next city along the Dnieper, or on the other side. And that's kind of the, the story you see in a lot of these. Like, they make it here by the end of July. It's crazy. That's so far. I mean, I, I don't doubt that they're going to try to do exactly that. They're just going to motor right up. So I think historically what happened is they, they took advantage of this area here, this bridge. But we changed their strategy because we defended it a little bit differently. So they're late to some of these places because we stacked up a huge army right here. And now we spread it out a little bit more. Hopefully that'll confuse things. I like thinking about that stuff though. All right. Uh, we already saved. So that's where we'll end it for today. Next time, 
we will turn the turn and watch hopefully less than a quarter million men die. <laughs> well, they're not all dying. Some of them are surrendering, but a lot of them are surrendering. But I would love to see the losses go down. All right. See you next time.